By the way, I didn't mention this at the beginning of this section, but sorry about the last section, the last few parts, being in low quality. Um, I was just experimenting with my new computer, and my old Dazzle wouldn't work with it, and my old Dazzle had the really sharp quality. It wouldn't work with the new computer because my Dazzle doesn't work with Windows 7 for some reason. And... <coughs> yeah, that's how it is. So, I'm recording with the old computer again, and I'm gonna be transferring the files to the new computer to edit. Isn't that just awesome? Yep. I don't think you care. And here he is! Our campione, Ezio! Oh, oh hey, hey Ezio. Ezio! I see you've wasted no time starting the celebration. And why not? You've done us a great service, Nipote. With Vieri dead, La Toscana will grow quiet once more. Do you know what that means? Basta lavorare. Si passa tutto il giorno a bere. E a puttane. What? It's true. <laughs> <laughs> Come, Ezio. Walk with me. Yes, uncle. The Pazzi answer to another, the Spaniard. He is Rodrigo Borgia, one of the most powerful men in all of Europe, and leader of the Templar Order. Which makes him responsible for the murder of my father and brothers. Yes, and he will kill you too, given the chance. Then I must stand against him if I wish to be free, but not until every other Templar has fallen to my blade. Father's list will guide me. Where will you go next? Firenze. Francesco de Pazzi will share the fate of his son. A sensible next step. No doubt he intends evil for the city. All right. That's enough grim talk for one night. I'll be in my study if you need me. I shall read the letter my uncle gave me. Okay, let's read that letter. Messer Francesco, I have done as requested and spoken with your son. I agree with your assessment, though only in part. Yes, Pieri is rash and prone to act without forethought. And he has a habit of treating the mercenary like playthings. I have received reports of at least three men being disfigured as a result. But I do not think him, as you put it beyond repair. Rather, I believe the solution to be a simple matter. He seeks your approval, your attention. These outbursts of his are a result of insecurities born out of a sense of inadequacy. He speaks of you often and fondly and expresses a desire to be closer to you. So, if he is loud and foul and angry, I believe it is simply because he wants to be noticed. He wants to be loved. Act as you see fit on the information I've given you here. But I must ask that we end this correspondence. Were he to discover the nature of our conversations, I fear what might become of me. Yours in confidence. Fragio Kondo. That sure was a weird letter. Eh. Sort of explains why Vieri is such a brat. Or was, at least. Look familiar? On the codex pages. Yes. Your father managed to find and translate a few before he... Here... This is not your father's work. Someone else has translated it. Leonardo da Vinci, a friend. Do you see the way the words cross from one page to the next? There is something underneath it all. Some kind of map. Where is it supposed to lead? Your father and I managed to make out bits of a prophecy scrawled across these pages. It was written by an assassin like us, who long ago held a piece of Eden. His name was Altair. 
He spoke of something powerful and ancient hidden beneath the land. What is it? What indeed? Solving that little mystery is exactly why we collected these pages. Then let me help. It's time I take on my father's work. All of it. I start with the page I took from Vieri. Leonardo will decode it for us. Then, return here when time permits, and we'll add it to the wall. Yep. This is what collecting the viewpoints are for. Completing the secret of the power beneath the land. And now it's time to reach the Vila's viewpoint. I'm not exactly sure why, but we must do it. I've already been up in this viewpoint before. At this viewpoint. Oh, and in case you're wondering, Altair is the name of the guy that we played as in Assassin's Creed 1! Aha! This game actually takes Altair into a lot of consideration. Uh, why do I keep calling him Altair? I don't know what's happening to me. I, you, I always called him Altair. And everyone else I know calls him Altair. But I always thought it was Altair, because I didn't like the... I'm not exactly sure how it's pronounced. I think it could be pronounced either way. You know how the Third Crusade worked. Hell, Cthulhu has, like, I don't know, seven different ways to... Seven, several different names for his name to be said. Lesson. Never talk while you're still thinking on your head. If you don't think of what you say before you say it, you end up saying stupid stuff. Like I do. I think I said like seven, several something different ways or something like Cthulhu stuff. I said something like that. Well, what's going on, Ezio? I have a feeling that Ezio has been drinking, sir. <clears throat> now for this next codex page. For some reason, these chests didn't appear at the beginning of when you entered the villa. But now they're just here all of a sudden because you went to the viewpoint a second time. Yeah... I question it, too. But, you really shouldn't. Logic in this game... Well, logic is actually pretty good in this game. Except for why a guard would run away from just me doing a stealth assassination. Actually, there is some logic to that. He could be just a big pansy. Oh well. Oh yeah, I might as well mention, Codex Codex pages also give you blocks of health. I have nine health blocks now. And let's get this last Codex page. And like I said, I can't ride horses in this game. And I can't ride horses in any game, for that matter. Oh hey, I got 800 florins for doing that. Go check on Claudia. I shall do that! Because now it's time for me to explain you why... Why you should save your money at the beginning of the game. I totally did not park that. I'm bad at parking things in real life and in video games. I'm not good at parking at all. I'm a running man. I'm a running man. I'm running home. I'm running home. 
and I'm running up a wall. 